Hey, Jimmy, how are you? Hi, very good. Good. Hey, everybody, I wanted to introduce you to Jimmy Wakimoto from Nexa Mortgage. Jimmy has been a mortgage lender for about 25 years, and I've actually known him personally and worked with him for about 20 of those years. And Jimmy's a former engineer, loves numbers, very methodical, and super smart. So anyway, one of the things that we're talking about today, Jimmy, is I wanted to get you here because we wanted to talk about interest rates. So our interest rates, you know, they keep rising and rising and rising. And people are thinking that they want to wait until interest rates come down before purchasing. So we wanted to talk about that. You know, what does that involve? Is that a good idea? Should they be waiting? So let's just dive into it, shall we? Yeah. So I have this conversation with a lot of people and on, on the surface, it actually makes a ton of sense. Why would you buy walking into an environment where the payment is going to be arguably the highest, you know, that it could be? And uh, certainly that doesn't seem to make any sense, but you have to kind of go a little bit deeper uh, to get the big picture of what's going on. Although the interest rates are quite a bit higher than they were over the past couple of years, the appreciation or the home values are continuing to increase okay and so again it would make sense oh my gosh higher prices higher interest rates higher payment why would i do this now well, right the- and i want to include right here is the slide and this is from the california association of realtors and it shows that from 2016 to 2023 it has been a consistent consistent rise in purchase prices and the median days on market continue to be very low. Right. And then over time, if we look at Los Angeles County, appreciation on average over 60 years has been between 5 and 6%. Okay. So if we had a slow year, we, we could even have a negative year, but then we've had years of 20% as well. So over time, 5 to 6% appreciation. At this point in time, it's actually right on that pace, you know, for 2023. So if we understand uh, both from your chart and, you know, of course, everything that I review, that uh, prices are going up then that means that as far as price goes this is going to be the time to buy and we coined this phrase uh, uh, like a year ago and it was uh, marry the house date the rate so the house is something that's going to be permanent or semi-permanent you know marriage um but the uh, interest rate is something that you're only dating you can go ahead and change out that mortgage for something better when it comes along and something better is around the corner Right. And, you know, you and I did a study and we looked at, let's just say somebody was downsizing or, you know, first purchase, either one, but we just took a number like 800,000. Let's just say they're going to take 800,000 and that's what the new property is going to be because they're downsizing. They're getting a condo or a townhouse. And we looked at what is the rate today paying 800,000 versus waiting maybe another year where the interest rate might be lower, what does that payment look like? Are they actually going to be saving money if the rate goes down? And so I'm looking at the chart right now. And basically, this was modeled on 5% appreciation per year. So in six months, we had it going up by 2.5%. Um, one year is 5%, one in, um, so two years, et cetera, uh, going up by 10%. And so with that, and I actually decreased the interest rate by one full percent it's likely that the rate will go lower in the um, coming years than only 1% lower. But still showing that we have on here the payment differences. And because it's a higher price than later on, the payment uh, would be higher even though the interest rate is lower. So that's something we have illustrated here. Okay, so I'm going to put this cost of waiting here for everybody. And let's take a look at that. The the bottom line, total cost of waiting, let's just say if somebody waited one year, we're looking at different things that they're losing out on, such as they have to come up with a higher down payment, right? But there's a loss in property appreciation, which a lot of people don't think about. So the appreciation is that amount of money that they are gaining in equity. So if you're going to be purchasing If you wait, then you're going to be losing out on that appreciation, number one. Then there's also the amortization lost. And can you explain a little bit about that, the amortization loss? Sure. And so we are going to lose out, like you mentioned, on the appreciation. And then the other component of that is when you make your mortgage payment, there is a component of that, the principal part, where you're actually paying yourself. You know, your mortgage payment is made up of principal and interest. 
and the front end, the bulk of it is interest, but then there's a portion of that that is paying down the principal. And that's a positive thing because it grows your net worth when your liability, when your mortgage balance is lower, then um, it's the asset value minus liability, and that increases your net worth. Right. So, so that increases the equity. So therefore, you exactly. actually do have more money. Exactly. Right. So using that component, um, we have, um, looking here, e even after just six months, you would be better off um, in net worth to own the property by 23000 Or if you waited one year, it would be better for you to buy, it would be more beneficial by 46000 and then two years waiting, you miss out on $96,000. And then three years, you miss out on potentially $148,000, you know. Oh, my gosh. So if someone is on the fence thinking, I'm just going to wait a year, and it's let's just say it's $800,000 purchase, and the interest rate goes down one point, one percent their actual loss over the life of the loan is approximately 46,821. In just one year, correct. And, and just by waiting one year, that total cost of waiting is really high. What are some of the other things? Right now, we're seeing there are fewer homes on the market, but they're selling very quickly. But we still see that there's less competition. There are some homes that are still going down in price. So I did a study, you know, Paulus Verdes, and we saw about a third of the homes had actually seen a decrease in price, but we have to take a look at each individual area, right? So we can't just make one broad statement like that. It just depends on the individual property. But anyway, but right now, I think that buyers have more choices. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't long ago that uh, we participated in this market. And the one property that I'm thinking of, uh, as far as I know, it got over 60 offers and it was such a difficult time to be in that environment because if we had qualified buyers, it didn't do anything for us because there was so much competition. You couldn't even get your offer looked at unless it was the top three. It was just a very difficult time and there's still competition in this market. It's tiny compared to what we had um, prior. And there are offers being accepted. You have a fighting chance to, whereas when the interest rates come down, which uh, all the forecasts show, we're going to have more and more people coming off the fence into the game again. That's going to give them much more competition. Certainly the prices will go up even faster at that point, right. but then you might not even get your offer considered because there's so much competition. The best time to be looking for a property because it's off the radar. People have the sentiment of wait, wait, wait. That is the fear component that's keeping people away. Whereas if you have an intellectual understanding of where we are and going to where the hockey puck is going, right? We can go ahead and take advantage of people's fears. Right. And actually what we have to do is just look at historically what has happened when the interest rates go down. When the interest rates go down, there are more people able to purchase. With more people able to purchase, now you have more buyers and that drives up the property price. So anyone who's sitting on the fence, they're going to be looking at a higher price in the future. 